You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Thank you for listening again, joining us. Uh, you know, Ryan, yeah. welcome, welcome. Good to see you, my Oh, friend. thank you. Yeah, no, I got to be here. You know, I, ne- <laughs> I never listen to the episodes. I never, ever, ever do. But I listened to the Pete Holmes episode. Yeah. And I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a good time, right? Yeah, I actually enjoyed it. I was like, hey, this was a fun interview. I wasn't like you know, completely turned off by my voice, which was nice. <laughs> I thought I was going to be like, oh, God, shut the F up. But uh, I really enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. If you're here for Harvey Guillen, I hope that if you like the podcast, all I ask you is if you can subscribe, write a review. It really helps the podcast. So, hey, we're the little podcast that could. Um, our socials, if you want to follow us, which are important, are, Ryan? Uh, at Inside of You Pod on Twitter, at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. That's true. Mm-hmm. I just picked my nose a little bit. Oh, nice. I uh, also want to support some things that I'd love. Um, the Animal Rescue Mission rescues, rehabs, and finds forever homes for abused and neglected animals. Go to theanimalrescuemission.org. Tell Shira. Rosenbaum says hello. Uh, also, foodonfoot.org for the homeless situation in Los Angeles, which is is terrible, and uh, you could help them out and donate. Or the Echoes of Hope uh, .org, I think. Echoes of Hope .org for the um, foster youth, helping foster youth all over Los Angeles, and that truly helps. Three great companies three great organizations nonprofits, if you will um so i'll say that also if you want to join patreon join patreon and support the show without patreon i don't think the show would be going so go to patreon.com slash inside of you and i'll message you back if you become a a, a patron and uh that's pretty much it um I, I to the top tiers i send boxes of merch every four months with a little note uh, you get your name read off at the end of every show there's youtube lives with me q a's there's like a lot of great stuff bonus episodes so go to patreon.com slash inside of you and of course the inside of you online store tons of awesome merch and smallville stuff and autographs and tumblers and check it out the inside of you online store um today's guest harvey Gian from Another great one. Oh, man. man. He is such a great guy. What we do in the shadows. If you haven't seen the show, we really, it was an emotional journey. It was this great story about him and his mom and, you know, him coming out and how hard that was. And, and um, you know, it's, it's nice to hear people open up because there's a lot of people listening that probably have dealt with similar situations. He's just a great soul. I loved having him here. And we talk really about everything. And so... Why don't we just get to it? Why don't we get inside of Harvey Gian? It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. You're commenting on all my toys and my gadgets and my posters and my bobbleheads. I like it. I, I'm. I love going to like spaces and seeing. I, I like when a place looks like there's a story. So I feel like there's a story to all the pieces here. So there's a conversation to be had. They're my friends. <gasps> They're my friends. My doodles are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I actually made a little short film with some friends. It was called Child. It's about a giant child. Um, and he doesn't stop growing, and the parents are played by kids, and I play the child. <laughs> and you can find it, but it's a it's a cool little fairy tale short. But he just never, you know, he grows up too fast. He gets too big too fast. He's eight years old, and he's a giant. Right. And it was really fun. It was really a. I don't know why I told you that. I like that. Where's yeah. the poster? You should have a poster for it. Should I have the giant? I do have a giant poster somewhere. Yeah. I just didn't put it up. Are you a horror movie fan? Yeah, I like horror. I like slasher thrillers. Um, yeah. I like it. I like it on <laughs> puppets. Yeah. I Is that Freddy Krueger's hand? That's Freddy Krueger's hand. <laughs> see, wow, so see, if people are listening, they're going to probably <laughs> go back and watch it because they want to, although they won't see it. Oh, they they wouldn't see Freddy Krueger's hand. You could just, just see my facial expression seeing everything I'm seeing. Yeah. So that's, that's true. Yeah. So where do we meet? Where do we meet? I think we met at a con, Comic Con. Do we meet at a con? Yeah, I think we met at a con. No, wait. We officially met. Oh, <laughs> oh no. you can't say. Can I can't say. I was on a you date were with a friend of with mine. With a friend of yours, right? Um, and it was it was actually it was cool because it was it was a first date, but it was to see <laughs> you in your show. What um, do you mean to, for me? My stand up? Yeah, you were opening or doing something. You're buddies with them, and and they had a set, and then I 
met you that day by association, but it was like the date and like it was meeting you. And then we went to like Barney's Beanery afterwards. And, yeah. Uh, just, yeah. And it was, uh, but yeah. So we kind of met that way, like a soft meet soft meat was uh, it uncomfortable was it a what is it was it a fun no date? You, were, you were lovely you were great no it was it was it was a fun date it was just <laughs> not what i thought it would be what'd and you I, think it would be like dinner in a movie i thought so i was like dinner in a movie or something and it was like yeah i just said uh, gonna see uh which is by the way we're not saying who this person is but they're wonderful wonderful, they're wonderful person uh lovely lovely comedian uh, and it's just uh yeah so it's just like that's how we met that's how we met and then kind of through like you know, the uh, Comic-Con circuit. How do you like the Comic-Cons? I like them. I think I'm the only one in my cast who likes them. Um, I just, I don't know. I think for so long, you know, I grew up in LA and going to Comic-Con San Diego was so expensive. And you put like all your effort into going and you really wanted to see those actors or whoever you idolized at those events. So you would go as a fan? I couldn't when I was, I, I was so poor. I couldn't afford to go. Really? But you wanted to. <laughs> but I want to. You, you were, okay. And then now with the opportunity to go to the cons and when people, when I don't go to a certain con, people will let me know on socials like, why didn't you go? That's, oh, that's the only place. Because that's as far, that, you know, some cons are like regional. Right. So that's as far as someone can drive. That's as far as their and they're allowed to can afford to travel right so they can only travel one state over or whatever so it always feels it breaks my heart when i hear stories of people who can't come to San Diego comic-con so far away or they can only go to the comic-con in ohio and it's like i drove eight hours to go to the con please go to that con so i try to make as many cons as i can just yeah. if my schedule allows it it's usually in the weekends and so i don't have a lot of weekends off but like when i can i'll try to go to them who would you have wanted to see if you had money if your family had money to go to a san diego comic-con or a comic-con what actors would you be like oh i gotta meet them i gotta get a picture with them i mean like the first one was like this first spider-man you know so it was like toby you know like I was you're like, a big I, toby mcguire well fan. i was at the time i mean sure, yeah he's great like i'm just at that time i was so like oh my gosh you know spider-man and it came out on my birthday uh wow. i remember it was uh yeah and i was in school and it came out on my birthday and uh may 3rd was the premiere of the of the movie and i was like oh my gosh on my birthday so i was a big <laughs> spider-man fan <laughs> how old were you oh my god i don't remember i mean clear by the way what I'm year snap. was this this was what year did the first one come out? 2002. Two. 2002. Yeah. So it was 20 years ago. So you were 11. It was 12. a baby. I was a baby. And the fact that I wanted to meet them so bad because, well, it was, you know, when you look at screen and you look at movies and you're like, it's so aspirational, like, wow, Hollywood, glamour, so, you know, yeah. movie stars. Uh, but then again, like, you know, you never know where life is going to take you. Cause now it's like, now that I get to go to the cons, I don't want to be that actor who didn't go to that one con and made someone's like, Dream didn't country. You know what I mean? <laughs> what about when you go to the cons now? Are there other actors there that you're like, oh my gosh, so and so's there? Yeah. I mean, my first time I met William Shatner was at a con, and that was really funny. Was he nice? Uh, he was really nice. He's really like, I mean, he, the guy is 90 or 91, 91 years old or something. He's yeah. 91. And he's still going to those he's cons. I just saw him. We saw him at the last, saw one, the last one in Raleigh. Yeah. And I was just like, wow. So I got to give it to him. He's like, I mean, at 91, you know, doing why do, that. Yeah, why do you think he wants to keep doing that at 91? I don't know. To keep going, maybe? To maybe, keep I don't busy? Think he, I don't know. I can't speak for him, but, like, I don't know. If, I don't think he needs, like, any kind of no, he more need money. money or recognition. You know, like, it's like he's his legacy is established. I think it's more, maybe, I, I would hope that it is, I think, for me, it would be to connect with the fans. Like, to be like, there must be someone out there who hasn't told them how they changed their life, how they made them feel, how they were a part of their childhood. So it must be somebody. You really think that's it? I, mean, I don't know about Bill Shatner. Look, I had a great conversation <laughs> with him one weekend, and he was maybe really it's money. sweet. It's money. <laughs> I, I, maybe it's money for his uh, family to give them after. To that's like, true. You know, make us, I know Stan... Um, uh, Stan Lee. Lee. Stan Lee, <laughs> yes. God bless. Stan, I was thinking Stan Winston for a second, but Stan Lee did the same thing. He would do cons up till the very end. And I kept thinking, why? Why? But maybe he liked it. He loved the, the fans. He loved they yeah. helped him create his world. And, yeah. And he did it for them. And yeah. so there's this this symbiotic sort of relationship. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I would hope that it's that. Maybe it is money. Maybe it's money that, you know, people have bills to pay and family support. Yeah. But uh, I met him through a con. What was another one? I just met the original Red Power Ranger. <laughs> Were you is, excited about that? Well, yeah, because I mean, again, that's like my childhood. You know wow. what I mean? Wow. So I have, like, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't watch the Power Rangers when yeah. I was a kid. I just, so, did, I, you know, wow. It was all coming together. Like it was, and then also the fact that 
some of these, you know, actors and, and celebrities and whatnot were coming up to me and saying like, oh my gosh, I love your show. And I was like, blah, 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 blah. isn't that cool? Isn't yeah, that cool? When your fellow cool. peers yeah. come up to you and they're like, you're great. And yeah. I saw you, by the way, at Easter Sunday, Joe Coy's new movie at mm-hmm. the premiere. I was like, Joe was asking me to post stuff and I didn't get an invite to the premiere, <laughs> but he wanted me to post <laughs> shit. Fuck you, Joe Coy. <laughs> I have a stepmom that's Filipino. <laughs> he's wonderful. I just met him. I love him. Not so long ago. And uh, it's so great what he's doing, obviously, with the movie and for the Filipino community. And uh, it's the first of its kind, you know, so I definitely have to support. And, and it's like one feather on one of our hats is a feather on all our hats, you know, especially being PLC. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So look, you've done a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm I'm looking at your resume. It's not like you've done thousands of things. You're still building your career. What we do in the shadows was the biggest thing you've done, mm-hmm. right? It was I like I had so, done yeah. a bunch of stuff, and then all of a sudden Smallville, and that was the biggest thing I had done. Mm-hmm. Um, well, first of all, let's go back, back in time. Were your did, were you were you raised by were your mom and dad together? Yeah. So my mom it was me and my mom for my, the first six years of my life. So she was a single mom working like three jobs, just keeping a roof over our heads. And then when I was six, she met my stepdad, and my stepdad was the most wonderful dad. Like I call him my dad. I don't call him my stepdad because he raised me. You know. So, Is he still with us? No, he passed away like five years ago. Oh, how hard was that? That was tough because he was such. He was the first person to encourage me to do acting. Really? My mom was very traditional, was wonderful in the traditional Mexican mother sense, where she's like, you have to be, a, you know, abogado or a doctor, like a lawyer or a doctor. And I was like, why are those always the two professions? Like, it's just like, <laughs> why are the hardest professions yeah, the ones that you choose? You have to choose. It's, I think, because she wants, you know, she sacrificed a lot to, you know, come to this country and, and for her offspring to choose. And I want to be an actor. And it's like, well, you know, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not the most stable because it isn't. This, you Did know, you feel a responsibility almost to her to to pursue those things? No, not in a way because I've always been stubborn. And I was always like when she would tell me like, you know, she never said I couldn't do it. She just discouraged me to do it. She said because uh, when I fell in love with acting was I saw Annie for the first time on television. Yeah, I read that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was watching this. I thought it was a movie or a TV show. I didn't know it was a movie. So we didn't go to the movie theaters. That was rich people did that. Like it was a movie. Wow. So you were really poor. We were really poor. Yeah. And I was like, I thought this was a new TV show during my Christmas break. So I couldn't understand what the episodes were so back to back. <laughs> And they're just cohesive. Yeah, they're like, wow, this is really well edited. (laughs) The commercial breaks are seamless. Like, there's a commercial break, and it comes back where I picked up. I was like, this is good. That's good writing. Wow. (laughs) This is really good fucking writing. And um, I told my mom I fell in love with it because these kids were poor, dancing and singing. And I was like, oh, my gosh, mom, I want to be that when I grow up. I want to be an orphan. (laughs) And she looked at me weird. She's like, yeah. That's loco? And she's like, are you crazy? I was like, well, why don't we be an orphan? And she was like, no, son actores, they're actors. I was like, oh, actor. And so. You meant it. I want to be an actor. I don't yeah, want to be an, an orphan. orphan. I don't want your dad <laughs> yeah. to leave me. <laughs> and literally, I was just like, so I told her, well, how do I become an actor? And she said, that's for rich kids. And I was like, you got to be rich to play poor on television. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> and then she goes, no, I mean, they, they take acting classes, dancing and voice and all that. And we don't have money for that. And I was like, oh. so I was kind of discouraged then, but she saw it in my face and she said, I didn't say you couldn't do it. I said that we can't pay for that. But if you find your way, Miko, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you What's want. What's that mean? If you find your own way, no, Miko? Miko, uh, Miko, my son, like my it's, son. A, oh, okay. it's like a, a, a nice way of saying truly dear, like, like son, like son, um, you can do whatever you want. And I said, okay, fine. Cause I'm six years old and I know what to do with my life. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And we were walking home from school one day and I found out that at the local community center, they're doing like a improv class. And it was like twelve dollars and fifty cents. And how old are you? This is six. You're like six, six years yeah. old. And the my fellow thespian at school, because we would reenact the Disney Channel thing with the wand. Right. We'd be like, "Hi, I'm Harvey Keen. You're watching Disney Channel." <laughs> and mine's would never look good. <laughs> like I think he can edit this and maybe gets whatever I'm drawing because oh, it does boy. not look like anything. Uh, so we were practicing. And we want. We thought if we got on Disney Channel, you could be an actor. So that was our ticket in. So we're like, we're gonna be on Disney Channel. We just have to take acting classes. And then she found out there was an acting class at a local community center. And it was twelve dollars fifty cents for improv class. So two dollars and fifty cents. Twelve dollars. Twelve dollars. Twelve dollars fifty cents. Right. And I was just like, I went to my mom and I was like, can I have the money? She's like, no. I was like, we have the money for that. And I was like, oh. she went to her parents and they gave her twenty. And I was like, so it started teaching me like the gap of like you know. Uh, 
generational wealth where it was like my mom was struggling just to keep us you know alive and how lucky it was that my friend could go to her parents you know who uh were already paid off with their mortgage already you know what i mean or like whatever uh, had a well education uh degree job whatnot and so i was like i don't understand the difference here and so i was like i had to find another way i have to get that money and so we're walking home from school one day and we walked by a park and this homeless man was going through a trash can. And I was like, mom, that's so gross. Why is he doing that? And he said, oh, vende los botes, which means he sells the cans. Right. And I was like, you make money off of trash? And so I went into her closet, got a wire hanger and hooked into a long finger, got a food for less plastic bag and collected bottles and cans. And that's how I paid for my first improv class. Wow. Yeah. Now a word from our sponsor, Better Help. Better Help. I don't know what we do with that Better Help. Uh, you know, I have been lately dealing with a lot of anxiety, and what happens is I hyper focus on all these negative things, Ryan, mm -hmm. that keep spiraling, and I can't. I can't. I, it's hard to focus. It's and it exhausts me and gives me anxiety. Mm -hmm. And these thoughts kind of just. And I know it's not. I shouldn't be thinking all these things. And I, it's, it's like my mind, I can't put it to rest a lot of times. And, um, you know, it can be tough to, to train your brain to stay in problem solving mode. And, you know, especially when you're facing challenges in life. And I know that therapy helps that talking to someone and having them talk to you objectively about what works, trained professionals helps it just does. I if, uh, Doing it on my own isn't working. It's just not working. If I don't have someone to talk to, I will just continue to spiral. There's no way out. That's how I feel. Do you feel that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you have to talk to somebody. You know, people always say, well, how'd you get into therapy? It's because I just couldn't solve these problems on my own. I couldn't you know, it's, you could say you're going to do these things and you're saying, oh, you, you, what happens is you just bottle stuff up, folks. We just bottle things up until it becomes very toxic and our body feels it physiologically. We feel the effects of, you know, pain, depression, anxiety, and it takes a toll on your mind and your body. And that is why I got into therapy. And I'll tell you, a lot of times I have nothing to talk about. And for the first five minutes, I'm like, why am I here? What am I doing? And by the end of it, I'm like, Thank God I'm talking to somebody. My Lord. Look, if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. Ryan here does BetterHelp. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists any time. Um, you know, a lot of times people are selling things and there's ads you have to read to me, this is the easiest read ever because it's just something I could talk about forever. And um, look, BetterHelp is is a great place. It's a it's a place to to help a lot of people. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com/inside today to get ten percent off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com/inside. Inside of you is brought to you by Shopify. Um, if you want your business to grow, if you want to sell stuff and you want it to be easy and not a hassle, it's Shopify, period. I'm talking from experience, folks. I'm talking from experience. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere, whether it's it's vintage teas or recipes for ghee. Starting, start, just start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide i started selling um products on the inside of you shopify account and at first it was just a t-shirt and it's grown exponentially i mean it really has grown i've got so many items and what's great is you can keep track of your best selling items your least selling items you could do discounts it's easy to set things up i can do this if i can do this you can do this i have no patience okay a lot of add here folks shopify makes your life simple it's so easy and it's fun with shopify you'll create an online store in your vibe discover new customers and grow the following that keeps them coming back and thanks to 24 7 support and free libraries full of educational content shopify's got you every step of the way it's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale with shopify and you will too 
When you're ready to launch your thing into the spotlight, do it with Shopify, the commerce platform backing millions of businesses down the street and around the globe. Go on, try Shopify for free and start selling everywhere. This is Possibility powered by Shopify. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash inside, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash inside to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash inside. I mean, that's a lot of bottles. I, you're telling me. I went after two weeks and I thought I had plenty of bottles because I hadn't worked out the system about squishing the aluminum can. So I leave it in whole like its whole entirety right. into the bag. Hadn't caught up yet. I didn't know the, I didn't know the skills of collecting cans. So I, I collected so many bags and I thought the bags themselves would be money, you know, gold, gold in them hills. And I went to the Food for Less and behind the alley, gave all of these bags, all these bags. And the first round was like $5.40 or something like that. Oh and I was like, gosh. no. And it took me two weeks to earn these. So I went back to the parks. I crashed quinceañeras. I poured out half <laughs> drink beer bottles and people got mad at me and ran <laughs> and like totally like hijacked because I needed to pay for this. And finally got the money. I took the class. The class was like an hour and a half. It was babysitting because they divided us from six to like nine year olds. Right. And then like 10 to like probably 14 or 15. The older kids got like actual assignments. Like they were like, okay, guys, improv, but like, let's make it fun and blah, blah. And the little kids were just walking around all together in a group. And they were just like, now you're a lion. Okay, now you're a tiger. Now you're a bear. Like all kinds of animals. And you're just acting it out. And for some reason, whatever I was doing was making everyone laugh. And I was just like, there was this crackle to like performing that I never felt before. And I still feel it to this day, but it was, that was the first day I felt it. Like I was like, whoa, people are having fun and I'm making them laugh and I, I, I can give them a good experience. And so entertaining was like what I knew I wanted to do from that day on. Right from the first improv class you yeah. took. You could tell the reception of what you were doing was something fun, something good. You felt good doing it. And yeah. you went back home to your mother and you said, Mom. Yeah, I want to do this again. I want to be an orphan. And <laughs> more, bottles, <laughs> more bottles, more bottles. Yeah, I kept doing it. And it's so funny because whenever someone says, like recently with Shadows, they're like, oh my God, what an overnight success, you know? And I was like, mm. for me, it's been a journey, you know? Yeah. So no one sees the the ups and downs or the collecting cans in your six. And I did that for a while. And after a while I had to get smart to making money quicker. And so I remember when I was little, I was like seven or eight. I would help my stepdad at that point. My mom had uh, remarried and got with my stepdad and I would help with this construction company. So in my summers, I go and like just haul like bricks over to where they were working. That's seven years old. Seven, seven and eight. Yeah. And like, it wasn't like, you know, huge manual labor. He wouldn't let me do like the big stuff. It was just like move that, you know, three blocks or three bricks or whatever over there, which is totally. And how much doable. would he pay you? He paid me like at the end of the day, I was paying me like twenty bucks or something like that. Which yeah, was, was enough for a class. That's pretty good. Like yeah. One day, one day in the summer to get twenty bucks at the end of the day, it's pretty good. And so, and he knew that's what it was feeding. Like he knew that, like he was kind of you know financing that like passion of mine, because eventually I heard that there was like a. Robert Power or whatever at the mall kind of thing scenario where they're like, you want to be on Disney Channel? Then come on down to the mall and sign up for Robert Power. It was like, you know, uh, and I don't know if it was specifically that. So if you're listening to Robert Powers, don't get mad at me. <laughs> but it was one of those things where it was like, come to the mall. And if you want to be an actor, we're looking for young actors. And it was a scam. It was like they charge you $500 for headshots. And that's uh, what you got to get done. All, you never went past that. Right. Like they just charge you and they give you your headshots. And like, here you go. But the headshots cost like 50 bucks to take and they pocket 450 And they disappear. They disappear. But I never did the program because my I wanted to do it so bad. My mom was like, no, no, no. Something's wrong with like, it sounds weird. No, mom, if you just pay for it, they just, they put you on Disney. I was so convinced. And that's how they get their clientele. They get the kids to get excited and mm -hmm. get their parents. And then my mom said no, but my dad saw how heartbroken I was. He was like, Vete del carro. And I goes, oh, wait in the car. I'll, go. I'll take you in a bit. And so he like stalled and like I went in the car. He took me to the thing. And after listening to this lady sell me on this, I knew it was a scam as a child. Like I was only like eight and I was like, and I was like, okay, but when do we start filming? <laughs> like I was like Jeez. asking questions. And she was like, well, you don't start filming, hun, till you get your picture. So if your dad just gives us the $500 right now. And I was like, no. I <laughs> literally told my dad. Really? Yeah, I was like, no. And I was like, so I have to take pictures? And like, but just pictures alone are going to cost $100? And she was like, why don't you let your dad pay for that? And I was like, wow. I could just, I was always good at picking up like people's, I don't know, like I could tell if you're a good person or a bad person off the bat. Their energy. Their energy. I'm really big on energy. 
yeah, to this day, I go off energy a lot. So something felt wrong. And my dad loved him so much. Like he was about to pay the 500. And I was like, no. And I stopped my dad from paying because I knew I would never forgive myself if he paid $500 for this scam, which I knew was a scam already. Wow. So we walked out of there and I was like, dad. And I was like, no. And I was like, no, no, it's better that. Like, it's not real. And he's like, oh, okay. Because my dad was just going to pay for whatever I want. You know what I mean? And it was really sweet. And like, I remember that day, I was like, oh my gosh, she believes in me. Like, he wants me to do this. Nice. And it was That's like the great. encouragement. What cut to, you know, doing a movie in Canada was my first time in Canada. He fell ill. How was, old were you? This was not that long ago. This one, like five years ago. Oh, wow. And uh, I was doing a film there and my dad fell ill because he'd been a smoker his whole life. And he was in the hospital. But my mom didn't tell me because he didn't want to bother me at work. Oh. And so he'd been in the hospital for like a month. And so I would call and like, say, how you doing? And he would like pretend that he was okay. And then I got back uh, home and literally... It was heartbreaking before I got there. My mom was like, just to let you know, he's been in the hospital. I was like, mom, why didn't you tell me? He's like, because he didn't want you to fly back home and worry about it. And I was like, okay, that's ridiculous. I would have left that movie. It was like a stupid movie. You know what I mean? And I just like got back and went to the hospital. It was like July, I think, 2nd. And I saw him in the hospital. I was like, oh, yeah, they put me on all this stuff. It's fine. I'm going to be fine. And I was like, okay, dad. And I was like, okay, well, I'll see you tomorrow. I was like, okay. And then he passed away that night. <sighs> and I was just like, he waited till I got home to say goodbye and i was oh, just like and he was God. he was the best dad and so i miss him terribly but he totally believed in me so i hope he's really proud of the work that i've done <laughs> isn't that isn't that most of it when someone that you love and look up to um supports you and what you want to do yeah and gives you unconditional love and says if that's what you want i mean there's nothing better no it really does make a that. huge difference you know it, it, it does i get it with the parents you know who have to be cautious and want to give them like a realistic but it doesn't hurt to kind of like you know always encourage whatever that dream is because you'd rather be happy doing what you love or at least try to do what you love and if you don't succeed at least you tried right. you know you could always say i tried it and it wasn't for me i tried it it was hard especially in this business this business has so many you know peaks and and valleys yeah. that it's like it's hard to encourage anyone to get into this business because it really is you know, i always tell people no yeah stay away if you can find anything else it's, anything else you love just as much do that yeah. anything else with stability but because you love doing this so much and we wouldn't be doing it if we didn't love it so much, you know, and yeah. be willing to put up with those valleys because the peaks are so great. How has your mom done without your father? Is she, she's just, she, you know, it's tough for a bit, obviously. Um, but she's done okay. And we have our whole family that live uh, next door to her. Oh, so that's good. she always has support and my nieces and my brothers and my sister are nearby all the time. Uh, in fact, I'm going to see her tomorrow. But yeah, it's so weird to think because now looking at her, look at the result of me wanting to be an actor. The highlight for her was when I was the spokesperson in Metro PCS in Spanish. <laughs> and this was like my early in my career. She would tell everyone about those commercials. Like she, I come over and she'd be having like coffee with like the neighbors. And she's like, oh, it's mi hijo, el de Metro PCS. That's my son. <laughs> From Metro PCS. And I was like, oh, it's okay. You don't have to announce it every time I come home. He's like, it's mijo. De Metro PCS. You know? She loved it. She loved it. Because it was in Spanish. She understood it. And it was like, commercials are a huge thing in the Spanish market. So to be in a commercial that repeats itself every commercial break and you're on everyone's screen. I would go to restaurants in LA and like be hanging out with like, you know, um, someone in the back and like the the chef or like the runners would be like hey the metro PC. you know what i mean like and they'd be like oh my god you watch it like you would be famous in a spanish speaking environment because of the commercial and then you step out into an english speaking environment no one knew who you were wow <laughs> like, you walk out and you'd be like okay see you guys later like the metro PC, yes. <laughs> and then someone would be like excuse me sir you know it's like are you the valet and i was like what no i just <laughs> no what, are you talking what? About? no and it's just like so it's 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 funny to see that because for my mom i've hit the pinnacle of like success with metro pcs nothing will ever top that like she constantly reminds me she's like oh the metro still PCS. to this yeah. day to this day she asked me if i'm doing more commercials in metro pcs and i was like mom i'm in the hit show blah blah she goes <laughs> oh pero metro pcs yeah, no. <laughs> and i was like no no more metro pcs goes, oh. <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Like so, like I can when, see the disappointment on her face yes, through you. Yes, it's literally oh. every time I see her. Like I, I've like you know gone accolade and won you know awards and stuff. And I'm like, mom, I won a GLAD award, which is like you know great and blah blah. Oh, qué bueno, pero metro PCS. Metro PCS. Inside of you is brought to you by Freedom Grooming. I was bald for seven years. Where was this product when I was bald? 
I constantly nicked myself with razors. The makeup artist on Smallville would nick my head. I'd bleed. I'd get razor bumps. But none of this would happen if I had Freedom Grooming. Freedom Grooming. We make the Flex Series Electric Shaver. This thing is awesome. It's uniquely designed to flex and contour to the curve of your head for a smoother, faster, and safer shave without the risk of nicks, cuts, irritation, or ingrowns. Uh, It's pretty incredible. And they work anywhere on the body. It's pretty awesome because I'm kind of a hairy guy. So I could take care of my chest, some of my back, my head if I want a face freedom grooming they really do it they've really done it with this great product um i have friends that i've given the product to my friend joe and uh he loves it Uh, i think this is something that everybody should have uh it's the old days are over folks the old days of nicking and all this irritation all this crap we've technologically grown and so has freedom grooming with their amazing flex series electric shaver Get the smoothest shave of your life. Flexible blades contour to the shape of your head for a baby smooth shave every time. Shave 50% more hair in a single stroke compared to traditional razors. Expect shave time two, three minutes tops, not 10 or 15. Never cut yourself shaving again. The Flex Series Safeguard technology means no nicks, no ingrown hairs, and no problems. And the Flex Series waterproof design means you can shave in the shower without or with shaving cream, shave wet, or shave dry. Pretty amazing. We have over 10,000 five-star reviews. Uh, And with the close shave plan, you'll never run out of fresh, sharp blades delivered to your door every six weeks with free shipping. It's the close shave plan. And members are upgraded to a lifetime warranty. Yeah, it's completely customizable. Just skip or cancel your plan anytime, Ryan. And to thank you for being such a loyal listener, we're partnering with Freedom to give you an exclusive 20% off when you go to freedomgrooming.com slash inside. That's freedomgrooming.com slash inside. Inside of you is brought to you by Geico. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. After all, who doesn't love a great deal, right? And when it comes to great rates on insurance for all the things in your life, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners, condo, or renters coverage. You could save even more with a special discount when you bundle your coverages. Plus, add the easy-to-use GEICO mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. And choosing to switch to GEICO becomes an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save with great rates and discounts. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com to get a rate quote or contact your local agent and get started seeing how much you could save. Did you, um, do you remember when you came out to your mother? Yes. I came out when she kept insisting that my friend, who's my best friend to this day, um, Adriana was so pretty. She was like, Adriana está bien bonita. Like, she's really pretty. She is really pretty. Yeah. Uh, unbeknownst to my mother, Adriana is queer. <laughs> she's right. a lesbian. And I was like, yeah, she's really beautiful. And she's like, pero no tiene novio? She has no boyfriend? I was like, no, I don't think so. I don't think she's, <laughs> no, no, she doesn't. And it's not my place to tell. Someone, and how old you know? were you at this point? This was high school. High school. This was high school. Like, this was like sophomore in high school, maybe junior year. And my mom always knew, but she never uh, officially had an answer or a, 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 a sentence or a quote for me to to validate what her hunts or her you know, hunch was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it was weird because I knew she knew. How did you know she knew? I, I think a mother always knows. You know, like I think it's just like, and I think me singing show tunes, uh, you know, at our at, our at our gatherings. That's true, and I don't want to like you know uh, categorize you know people who sing show tunes, but like I think I was always free in my being that like i thought she knew because i was always accused of it by others was that hard it was hard because she always would have to put up with that like you know one of my my um traumatic memories of knowing that i was different and knowing that it was because i was queer was because i was in mexico with my tonka truck which i like playing with tonka trucks very manly very boy yeah but also had dolls and so you had dolls and you had Tonka trucks. And then people are like, what's going on here? You know? And it's just <laughs> yeah. like, play with my Tonka track. I also play with my doll. You know? And it's like, um, boys don't play with dolls. Like, I remember having a conversation with, like, the local kids where my grandma's, like, you know, ranch thing was. And it was like, they could tell 
that I was just myself. And for some reason that was threatening and it was weird because it was different. And I just always love playing and make believe. And so I remember like I was trying to play trucks with these boys and they're like, we can't play trucks with you because my brother says you're a mariposa. What's that mean? My brother says you're a butterfly, which is a, der- a derogatory way of saying you're you're gay. Oh, and, and I was like, hurt. and that I didn't understand it. And I was like, mariposa. I was like, they're beautiful. What's wrong with them? I didn't know what the negative connotation to mariposa was at that age. Right. Because pretty young. And so they were saying it over and over. And I was like, what do you, what? Like I, and then I knew it was bad. I knew it was bad because I felt it. And I felt that it felt bad to be this because you don't like it and you don't like me being this. Oh. And it was like, they kept chanting it. Mariposa, mariposa, mariposa. And I was like, why do I want to play with you anyways? And I grabbed my Tonka truck and I walked away and they kept chanting it over. And, they, and then I felt something fly to the side of my ear. And then I turned around and it was just like rocks flying towards me. And one of them hit me right here where I have the scar. And I just remember like it gashed my face and just blood gushing over my face. And I just remember crying oh. and running with my truck and I dropped my truck and they kept chanting the word. And I was just covered in dirt because I found the dirt. Now it's dirt and mud on my face. Or like became like mud with the blood and the sand. And there's just like dirt all over, running to my mom, screaming. I was like, they call me mariposa. They call me mariposa. And she said, ¿Quién te dijo que eres mariposa? And I was like, they said it's mariposa. And my mom just looked at me and then she said, ¿Pues qué importa que te digan que es mariposas? Y las mariposas son bellas. Like, who cares that they called you butterfly? Butterflies are beautiful. And I just remember thinking it was okay, but I know she was making me feel better. Wow. Like she was making me feel better about what I was. So I knew she knew at that moment, even at that age, because she'd always protected me from people like that. Because I grew up in a very machismo, you know, environment yeah. and culture. Um, unfortunately, our culture is very machismo, you know. And it was uh, it was heartbreaking because I knew that she was fighting the fight for me. But it was like I think that moment when I came out, it was more to tell her officially. Like she kept hinting it. She just wanted me to say it. And she basically was like, Que bonita Adriana. And I was like, Yeah, she's really pretty. No tiene novio. No. It's like, Por la mejor tu puedes ser su novio. Maybe you can be her boyfriend. And I was like, Mom, you know, I'm queer, right? And she goes, Pues a mi que me importa. I don't care as long as you're happy. She just wanted to hear it. Oh. She just wanted to hear it, I think, for her sake. So we can actually put that to rest. But I think it was, it went without saying because for so many years she kind of protected me from it. You know what I mean? Right. So I think it was more for like, let's just, close that chapter we know it and we said it it's done as opposed to like teeter tat because i would bring so many girls home <laughs> right. and they're all your friends yeah and she would always be she'd be i think she got, I, I think here. at some point she got confused she was like or she got confused that i could be bi i could you know what i mean like it was yeah. just like so you know when i told her i was like yeah i was like i bring girls home bring like it wasn't like i was bringing them home to like you know take them in my room and like do stuff. It was just like, I think she couldn't understand. Like she was like, what, what's going on? Or I go on weekend trips, you know, and some would be with like girls and some would be the guy. And she's like, what's going on? You know, it's like, what's going on here? So I think it was more to like a safety thing too, you know? Has just she like, met any of your boyfriends? Yeah, she has. She's met, uh, all of them, actually. Yeah, she's met all of them. Was there one in particular she really liked and she was sad to see go? <clears throat> yes, there was. Um, <laughs> it was one that was particularly hard for her because they were very nice. I don't even want to mention the name because then I don't want to put them on the spotlight. Right. But it was, was someone who was like very lovely. Very, and then those others that she did not care for. And she made it very clear. And she, was she right in the long run? Uh, I think she was right. Yeah, yeah she was right all along. Her like, instincts from, were right. The instincts were good, from good and bad. Right. Her instincts were good. Uh, things didn't work out with the one that she liked, but that was more a personal thing for me. You know, it was like, I just don't feel it and you know and right. it's just like can't you make it feel it you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like i just don't you know um but yeah she's met all of them do you think you'd like to get married someday i don't know uh i think i like the idea of, me too i i have i don't know yeah i don't know and people are always like well the you know you could always get married like, i was like i don't i feel like being in a relationship it's hard enough that sometimes adding this i don't know the strain of like a wedding and like um a lot of relations fall apart, I think, during a wedding uh, or the process of a wedding, you know, because yeah, it really shows you the stress and if you can work under stress. And I already got enough stress uh, uh, right now. Like, I don't need any more stress. Do you have a lot of stress? Well, I feel like with my schedule, I don't have a lot of time to have time with a partner. That was kind of the reason why the other relationship that, or my past relationship dissolved right. was because I shoot out of the country. And I can't be home. Where do you shoot? We shoot in Toronto. You shoot Canada. in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Oh. So the reason my last relationship fell apart was because um, 
that person wanted someone home at five and felt heartbroken that we didn't have as much time, you know? Yeah. And it's not fair to that person. So literally I was the one who, kind of cut it off and was like, then you should be with someone who's home at five for dinner. And so, well, I want to be with you. And it's like, but if you want to be with me, then you understand that I can't be home, you know? Right. So see how that doesn't work. And it's like, well, we'll make it, well, I'll, I'll give it another go. I was like, it doesn't sound like, cause this was the conversation we had earlier. It was like, I work a lot. I travel a lot, unfortunately. So when I am with someone, I'm 150% in it. Like I'm romantic. Yeah. I try to make efforts to like take you know weekend getaways take vacations to spend time together you but need someone who understands, understands. Like has their own thing going going on that you can do your own thing and yeah. there's no questioning it there's no making you feel guilty yes there's no stress yes that's exactly what we need in yes. our lives we need somebody to say go fuck off i'll fuck off yeah and we'll fuck and we'll off fuck together, together. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly is that too much right. to ask for? It's not too much to ask for. Because people for. don't get that. People are like, well, I just like, so I like my partner to be like by my side. Or I don't. I want you to have your own thing. Yeah. I want you to go do, and I want you to tell me about it when I see you the next time I see you. And have that's a passion. so cool. And also something about distance makes you long somewhere. You know what I mean? Like if it's like every second of every day is just a lot. You know what I mean? And I've always said it's this, and I was talking to uh, my friend Nicole about this, and she was saying, I want my own room when I'm with someone. And I need a house with my own room, our room that we're together, and your room. And yep, you know yep, what I mean? And yep. when we're together, that's our room. When I come home after whatever day I've had, if I need to decompress, and like, let's say I was doing an emotional scene, and just, it always reminds me of that episode of Sex and the City when Carrie Bradshaw comes in, and she's telling, I think it's Burger she's doing at the time, uh, but she says, can you shut up for five minutes? <laughs> Because you walk in and he starts talking. He's like, hey, babe, how was your day? Which is really positive. Right. Really, but fuck you know, off. But yeah, for five minutes. Because that's what you need. Sometimes I, I like to come home. I think Whoopi Goldberg said this. Like, I don't want anyone in my home. <laughs> like, I don't, want, I don't want anyone in my house. Like, I just want to go home. And sometimes like, I... Because what we do is we we deal with people every day. So we interact with people. We have to act with people. Uh, we are social with people at parties. That's part of our job. You know, mm -hmm. we go and do that. So when you go home, sometimes I don't want anyone there. Yeah. Literally just want to watch like reality TV. I broke up right before the pandemic, yeah. which was Ooh. the perfect time. I, I think people were like, oh no, quarantine. Harvey, how you doing? You're all by yourself. I love it. <laughs> like I literally was like, I'm loving it. Yes. You know, after a while you get lonely and afterwards you have to FaceTime, you know, your family and whatnot. But I actually enjoyed it a little bit because it was like a pause button for a second. And it was like, this is good. This is good for me. For me, it was good. I can't speak for everyone. But for me, it was good. I was like, at least the first couple months. And after a while, you're like, okay, let's you know, get the ball rolling again. Right. Things. But yeah, I just, uh, you need to find someone who's compatible with you that way. Where like, they understand they have their own shit going on, they go away, come back. Yeah. But that's hard to find. Or sometimes it's hard to date another actor. Mm -hmm. And so I stopped dating actors because especially if you're dating another male actor or I was dating someone who was an actor, but most more of a model than anything. Mm, and shallow. And, and also that came, yes. <laughs> but also that came with a, its own kind of thing where like people would make me feel honored that I was with this person. Like people would be like, no. I was like, oh, this is my uh, partner. And I'm like, oh, Harvey, good job. And I was like, how about good job, good job him? him? Yeah. I'm like, good job, him. I'm awesome and beautiful. And yeah. And what is like, it? The butterfly? What? what is it? The cocoon. Oh, yeah. Mariposa. Oh, mariposa. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. I'm the mariposa. <laughs> uh, but it was so weird. And that was very telling of your friends of who like valued, you know. And yes, this this person was very good looking, you know. And right. like, what I, but, I'm pretty sure I saw pictures of him. Probably. Probably. Mm, sh he who should not be named. Yes. But it's just the idea that that we put so much value on that, you know, cause you didn't know what was going on behind closed doors. You know, there was a horrible partner, you know what I mean? That there were, uh, yeah, all the stuff that, that could be said, that could, you know, right. could be the opposite of that is not said because you are also trying to keep this relationship uh, afloat because now people have approved it or they want you to be in this relationship. Like, don't miss this one. Up. And it's like, don't miss, why would I be the one, you know, it's like, why? Uh, so that was very hear, I've heard that too, where it's like, you know, we really liked so and so. She was a good one. You what do messed, you want me to do? You messed that one why, up. Why is it me? Why is it, you know? I was like, well, she had some dark ass secrets. She was <laughs> like, the, you did, you guys didn't know her. Like, I'm just saying, we yeah. really liked her. They she, see, uh, they see good the package. match for you. Yeah. I'm like, good God, would you shut mm -hmm. up? The packaging looks great, right? Yeah. And then even then, people, people come for you. Um, it, it came with its own, like, you know, things like where, why are they together? You know, it's just like the, the body yeah. shaming or like the, how this doesn't make sense by society standards, you know? And it's like, well then, you know, and then take your society standards and shove it up here. You know, it's just like the idea. <laughs> 
so, but that's why I've changed from being open to maybe dating actors. And sometimes, you know, you're going to date, but since my time is kind of limited right now, I haven't been pursuing that avenue. Right, right, right. But, um, but I'm open to like, you know, the last person I did it was an engineer, you know? So oh, it's like good. different. And it's just like different where you're like, okay, we can have a conversation. Mix it up. Mix, Mix it, up. it up. And nothing to do with the industry. You're still young. So young. you don't need to d- jump in anything. Yeah. You need to take care of you. Yeah. Your career's taking off. Yeah. You've got steady. things going on. What we do in the shadows. Yeah. Which, by the way, I, first of all, I love the movie. Um, Taiki Waititi? Taika. Taika Waititi. Oh, mother God. I it. <laughs> Taika Waititi. Right? I saw the movie and I fell in love with it. I couldn't get the song out of my head. You're dead. You're, you're dead. dead. <laughs> of this world. Ryan loves the show. I love the show. I don't watch many shows, and this is one that I watch. I haven't started the fourth season. You got to catch up? Uh, I am going to catch <laughs> up, but I'm current. what? What? I'm current on it. You're so current? You oh, yeah. Oh, tonight's an episode. Is an it? Episode. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I, it's what an exciting show to be on. And you, you, were you uncertain that they were going to pick it up? Because they waited a while, didn't they? Well, I didn't know if we were going to. Well, first of all, I didn't know I was going to get the role because Guillermo was written 20 years older than I am. And so uh. I, I got the audition by uh, by accident. I went to a wine and cheese night. You went Hollywood. to wine and cheese night? Wine and cheese night that my friend Mimi Michaels was having. That's not, that's not her stage and that's her name, Mimi Michaels. Mimi Michaels. Um, we met in a commercial set years and years ago, we became friends. And she just had a newborn and she had brought the baby to see the family here in the West Coast, her brother. Uh, it was her, her husband, the baby, her bro- at her brother's house, and she was like, "Just come by, say hi. I won't see you for you know who knows because I'm going to go back to the East Coast and I haven't been able to get back there at that point." So I said, "Okay." So I went to the wine cheese night. And I met this girl who was there. Her name was Yvonne, her friend uh, from before that I never met before, and we didn't talk about the Hollywood or business or anything. We we're just having like a good old time. And the next day, I get a text from an unknown number, and I was like, "Hey, you were so fucking funny last night." I was like, "Thanks." Who's this? And so it's Yvonne. And I was like, oh, Yvonne from last night. I got your number from Mimi's. Uh, I hope that's okay. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And I think you should audition for my fiance's new show. And I was like. Your fiance's new show? Yeah. Who's your like, fiance? I was, exactly. I was like, okay, I don't do those kind of films. <laughs> and she was like, no, but you should hurry because ca- they've cast everyone in this show except for this role. And I was like, okay. So I call my agent and tell her, her fiance's Garrett Bash at the time who produces the show. And I told my agent, I was like, I got to get in for this show. And they're like, okay, we'll get you the script. And they're like, oh, wait, the characters, are you sure that's the character? I was like, yeah, it's 20 years older than you are. And I was like, oh, she said I'd be fine for it. So I'm going to believe a stranger, you know, go with that. And they're on like, a whim. on a whim. And I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't go in for it. And they're like, and I said, who's casting it? And it's like, Allison Jones. And I was like, oh. I was like, Allison Jones, if you know Allison Jones in Hollywood, I was like, she's cast everything that I've always loved. You know, Bridesmaids, The Office, Fresh Prince, Golden Girl, like you name it. You know what I mean? And I was just like, I want to go meet her. I've never met her. So I was like, okay, this is my chance. I'll just meet her. I'll just make myself look older. So I got this long sleeve orange shirt and brown sweater vest and Harry Potter glasses. And I don't know, like Guillermo's and the one that I knew at that time was in a poster in my writing partner's um, office and it was Guillermo del Toro and it was from his monsters book and he had his hair curled to the sides like this and he had round glasses and I was like oh, I was like I'll mimic that so I mimic my look off of how, how long did you have to learn your lines there was like the uh, the complimentary audition as I call it uh they called that day and the audition was the next day did you learn all your lines I learned everything I went home and like went over it and I was like oh shit he is older and I was like okay well I'm gonna play it at my age I'll play him at my age now Fine, that's fine. So I was really looking forward to meet Allison, going to the office. And I'm like, I'm here to meet Allison Jones. Like, oh, she's not here. I was like, well, no, I have an audition for her. No, we'll put you on tape. She's in London auditioning for Guillermo's. Okay. So I was like, well, great. And then they put a microphone on me. And I had Ben, the casting associate, who's wonderful too. And he was like, okay. And then I remember doing it. And I was looking up. And then he's a like, Harvey. And I went, like, yeah. And he goes, you're done. And I was like, oh, thank I just completely went away like i don't remember what i did for the audition and i was like oh thank you you were I, so into I it i was so into it that you forgot, forgot what you had done what I you didn't know if you'd done well nothing you done poorly nope so i walk wow. out i'm walking out the door and he goes harvey wait and i go oh, i think you know you're going to hollywood kid you know you should go to the next level he goes the microphone and he takes <laughs> me. 
<laughs> we need the microphone. Harvey. And he took the microphone off of me and I was like, oh, shoot, I, I think I messed it up. And then I went outside and my agent calls her, how'd you do? And I was like, I don't know. And I was like, well, we'll check in. We'll see. Two hours later, they called back and they had shown everyone at FX, Taika, Jermaine, Paul, Stephanie, like her, her fiance, uh, Garrett had seen it, Allison had seen it in London. And they all agreed to test me unanimously. They were like, it was the first time they voted to test someone unanimously at the first for the whole run. And I was going to be the wild card because I was too young. And I was like, fuck. And I was like, okay, it's fine. I'll get to meet them eventually. You know, I'll do the the test and whatnot. So weeks went by. Were you anything. nervous? Yeah, I was nervous. I was like, this is a test. And I've always, my career is made out of wild cards. Like if you look at my resume, those roles were never written for me. Some of the roles that you see on like IMDb. that Eye was, candy. Eye candy. They, uh, the original creator uh, wanted to fire me because he thought I was too big and not uh, MTV uh, handsome material. So after the pilot, he fought to like get rid of me. And then the fans were like, we love that character. And they're like, no, okay, keep him, keep him. But I wow. found out this afterwards. What about like, magicians? Magicians was not for me. They told me that uh, um, I couldn't send my tape in because they had options in LA. But I was shooting in Vancouver and they shoot in Vancouver. So I was sneaky and got an audition through the Vancouver office. So as long as I got on tape and the producers saw me, they liked it and they liked it and they told the casting office in LA, we found this guy in Vancouver who Harvey. And they're like, but we told him no. And it wasn't written for like, they wasn't meant for me. Like they didn't want me to audition for it. You forced your way in. I forced myself. In. Well, they originally gave me an audition and they took the audition away. Cause they said, we have enough uh, options in LA. Don't worry about it. So uh, that was going to put myself on tape and they didn't want to see tapes from Vancouver. Cause they have an office there. They're like, no, don't worry about it. We have options and we're going to producers tomorrow. And I was like, I learned the lines. Why did you tell me to put myself on tape? So a part of me was stubborn. I was like, no, there has to be a way around. I already learned the lines, you know? Right. So I got the audition in Vancouver. They send the tape to producers. The producers told the casting office in LA, we found this guy and it was the guy they told no to so back to what we do in the shadows you're waiting a couple of weeks waiting now. a couple of weeks and then it's i don't hear anything so i think they're starting production on that tuesday this is a sunday now so it's over it's over i'm not doing this i'm with my sister she's keeping my cheer you know trying to cheer me up and keeping my spirits up we go to the mall and we're walking around because that's what we do when you're low in the dumps um and she my phone keeps ringing like from a 16 digit number and i was like oh, whatever i'd ignore it eventually she's in the car and she's like, will you pick up the fucking phone? And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, hello? And I was like, hey, is this Javi? And I was like, yeah. Hey, it's Taika and Jermaine. Hi, uh, Mr. Waititi. Yes, I, I think I'm testing for you. No, you're not testing for us. Thank you so much. And I was like, thank you so much for the opportunity. I wish you all the best. <laughs> like I thought he was calling me because, you know, sometimes when you're on hold, they call you and they're like, not going your way. You know, they tell you that they give you a complimentary call and say they're going a different direction, you know? Right, right. So I thought that's what they were doing. I thought they were calling to say, Thank you, but we're starting this week already. But you did a great audition or whatever. So I was like, thank you so much for the opportunity. I wish you all the best. And now we'll see you on set. And I was like, what? And it's like, yeah, we'll see you on set. And it was a Sunday. Monday was Martin Luther King Day. And Tuesday, I had a fitting. And Wednesday, I was on set. And I booked it. Yeah. Hollywood. Uh... What was your first day on set like? Were you A, intimidated, B, nervous as shit, C, I mean, what were the emotions or were you confident you're ready to go or were you just overwhelmed? I was I was just looking forward to meeting Taika and Jermaine, obviously, because by that point I had seen the movie and I was such a fan and Flight of the Concord and all that. And oh, yeah. so I was just excited to meet them. But I was more nervous to meet the cast because I was going to have to act opposite of Kayvon. I never had the chemistry read. So, you know, in Hollywood, that can make or break a, a character, a yeah. storyline. And I I was nervous to meet him. And so I was like, oh, please, because the script is so good. I knew the script was good. I was like, if I just make this pilot and the pilot doesn't go, I'll have this footage, right? I'll have this footage. Like, I can keep this, because this is so good. Like, I was like, the script is so good. And I got to set, and the first thing came, I was like, hey, man. And he just, like, gave me this huge hug, and he was so welcoming and loving. I was like, thank God, you know? And, and, and it didn't work out. We shot the pilot. And after I shot the pilot, I knew that it was really special. Like, I was like, we have to get picked. This is crazy. Like, this is such a good show. Uh, but good shows don't tend to last long, you know? Yeah. Like, sometimes they get canned really quickly. And that had been the trajectory up to that part. I was really proud of the shows that I've done. Like, Eye Candy was a book made into a series. Only did one season. Super expensive to make, but beautifully shot. And it was like a movie. 
um, huge was a book by Sasha Paley made into a series, which was my first series regular ever, which had so much potential, but it was ahead of its time. People still talk about that show today. They're like, oh, I love that show. Why did it get, I was like, I don't know. Even the president at the time of, you know, that was just free form was back then was ABC family. Mm -hmm. Um, Even they moved forward and went to like MTV years later. And even I had a conversation with them and they're like, I should have never canceled huge. And I was like, you shouldn't, (laughs) you shouldn't have, because it was one of those things where it was like, you pulled the trigger too quickly. And it was like, damn it. You know, you just would have waited. Um, It had a fan base, you know? So anyways, I was really hoping that I was like, this is the one that like, please make into a series. And then we got season one and I was like, oh my gosh, we got a season. So I had not planned anything further than season one. Like I was like, they're going to like, see how cool this is. And either they're going to say yes, or they're going to can it. And then we got nominated you know, and then we got the nominations for Emmys. We got so it was like season two, season three, and before you knew it, it was just like, like the last three seasons have been a blur because they kind of happened during the pandemic, and so we shot two seasons during the pandemic, um, which is just credit to this like crew. They couldn't find like wood to build the sets because no one was delivering. Like during the pandemic, there was no shipments of like actual like you know wood and labor like or uh, you know uh, you tools and costume pieces and uh and fabric to make costume like they went above and beyond to make the show during the pandemic like our crew loves our show so much they went above and beyond like i applaud them because they're the best i uh i read for Nan- nando did you nandor? nandor nandor did you read for i nandor? read i went to allison jones office oh my god and read for her upstairs when you go upstairs yeah. and i read and i it's funny because i thought i killed it i had the accent i had all these things and then when i saw him uh like the actor do it i go oh my god i I couldn't he's perfect yeah i mean it's just the casting in that overall is just everyone is just great yeah everyone has their own personality is there one in particular one actor that makes you laugh the most for some reason it's probably Kayvon. most of my scenes are with Kayvon, and and he plays nandor he's just a master of voices he can mimic anyone on set uh he can is he always joking always joking um also he'll he'll make a joke and then he'll remember and laugh at the, his own joke that he just made <laughs> so he'll be like, like and then he'll be like oh, and then he starts laughing and, he's, and he knows that like i rarely break character as guillermo like on set because guillermo's the only human and he's so contained because the vampires get to be over the top great character of like you know almost like a farce you know and that's they improvise constantly all the time like our show is made of 50 percent scripted and 50 percent you improvised. too yeah yours is 50 mm-hmm. percent improvised that's why this cast i've never been with the cast like this where everyone's firing on all cylinders it's playing like hot potato and the potatoes never dropped we had a we had a season one take that ended up being about 20 seconds in the show but we shot for maybe 28 minutes of improv just let the camera roll 28 minutes of us going off script it was like who like it was a, a revolving door kind of thing where we're in the living room and Nandor's like Guillermo and I'm like I'm in the I'm in the fancy room Guillermo I'm over here master Guillermo and he comes in through another door and I exit the other door he's like Guillermo and then Naja comes in so like, what are you yelling about I'm looking for Guillermo oh I just saw him to the other room he goes that room like it was like da 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 like just for 26 going. minutes for 26 minutes no one yell cut. And you'll never see that footage because it was only 20 seconds of it that you needed for the In the show. beginning, was it intimidating to for them to go, keep going, add, improvise, go? I don't, for me, no, because I tend to want to improvise a lot. And that, you know, that's not usually the norm. Like in the scripted series, like, you know, you'll have, obviously, you know, you get on certain shows and they're like, this has to be verbatim. You know what I mean? Right. Like, this is why, like, so you can't paraphrase, you can't add words. I like a little bit of like ad lib because it makes it feel organic. It makes you feel like these characters are real. They're not like just like, I don't know what's going to happen next. You know, like it's not like, you know, so yeah, yeah. to the T that it's just like, ah, um, I like improvising. So for me, it was fun. I You tell me to improvise, improvise all day long. So the lines are written. So you have to read certain lines. These are the lines we want you to say. Yeah. And then do whatever you want. Yeah. So the, we'll always do a take with a scripted version. And that's what Taika and Jermaine, what's so lovely is they set this rule up for us even though like now they're, you know, doing projects all over the world and stuff and they'll come and say hi once in a while, but like it's now been handed over to our amazing EPs, um, you know, Paul and Stephanie uh, and Sarah Naftales who are amazing at continuing that tradition where they go get one as script written, you know, 
which is already the scripts are bites. If we didn't improvise on the show, it'd the still scripts be good. Are gr- like they're good. They're so good that we get the the freedom to do one script revision, and then they go. We call it funsies. So then, so Yana Gorskaya, our director, or Kyle Nuitchek, our director, goes, "All right, funsies," or Yana go, "Funsies," you know, which means that we got what we wanted. We got the take scripted. Now have fun. And I usually the episode that. is fifty percent scripted and fifty percent improvised. Who has the most lines? I would say Nandor because I I mean like well he's kind of like he's the lead of the show and his storyline is always revolving some kind of adventure and it's kind of hard to like say but I would say him because he has all of these like monologues where he talks about like his past life or whatnot yeah. but now looking at it because of the past seasons I feel like everyone's kind of had a season. We're like, it's like, it's like last season, last season was nausea or this season is nausea heavy where like she had tons of lines to learn because she's the nightclub. She, you know, she's, I don't want to do spoilers, but like she opens a nightclub uh, and um, she's dealing with being a boss, uh, money, blah, blah. So she has a lot this season. So it's like a nausea heavy. And you guys have a lot of time to memorize lines because they have them all written by. uh... Mm, Even though they have the funny part of the show is that they keep the tradition alive, like the movie, where they don't tell the actors what the storyline is. And to this day, like, I don't know what this next season is, but I already have friends who are actors who have told me that they're auditioning for the show. <laughs> and they're like, oh my <laughs> gosh, I'm so excited to play blank blank, you're blah, blah, blah. What? And he's like, yeah, I'm blah, blah, blah. They're auditioning right now for this part, for season, for episode 505 or whatever. Wow. And I'm like, I don't know what the first word of the sentence of the first script is of the season. Wow. And, you know, which is kind of like a little bit like jarring because it's like, for me, for my character, he's human. So I would like a little bit of preparation, you know, to like he's mentally. He's familiar. He's a familiar. And so the season, the first season was hard for me because at the end of the day, the vampires would wrap their storylines in the episode. Like they were like, we figure out how to work email, you know, it solves itself. Colin gets a promotion at work. It solves itself for the end of the episode. But Guillermo like was sprinkling throughout the whole thing to lead to something um, a big reveal, you know, and I would like to know what that reveal is. So I know what to sprinkle along the way. Right. So then it makes sense. Otherwise yeah. I look an idiot at the end of the season and they go, and surprise, you're this. And you're like, you're oh. a vampire slayer. Well, I would have <laughs> liked to sprinkle something they hint, you know, or maybe not hint it, but my process would have been a little bit different. You know what I mean? Right. If I knew that, if I, if I didn't know that I was a vampire, then leave it alone. I don't want to know. Cause it's organic. I don't know that I'm a vampire slayer, but if I knew something that came up in the, in the future from my past that would have been nice to know you know what i mean right so there's those moments where you're like oh, i wish i knew but it does make for it to feel like a real mockumentary you know or yeah. documentary it's a mockumentary but it keeps you on your toes obviously. do you ever do you ever feel like saying hey taika if you need anybody in any of your marvel movies oh yeah we always joke always around joke. i mean i feel like, He's he, like don't worry y'all <laughs> yeah um what was the last time we talked and i said something oh yeah i was just making a joke of like being star wars or something and he's like, you're not old enough. And I was like, I'm not old. I'm old. Like, put me in. Co-. Like, it was like, you know, he makes a joke that I was like a baby of the group. And I was like, I think I'm old enough. I think I can, I can grow a beard. I'm old. <laughs> uh, this is called shit talking with Harvey Guillen. <laughs> this is, these are my patrons, the top tier patrons. Mm. They get to ask some questions. Go to patreon.com slash inside of you. Uh, thank you for supporting the show. These people, they're, they're amazing. My patrons support the podcast and mm. they get to ask some questions. Great. So this is rapid fire. Okay. So you could just, here we go. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Raj, have you ever met a Colin in real life that drained you just from having to interact with them? Yes, absolutely. Not, I feel like not so much. (laughs) We all have one. We all have, yeah. We all have a Colin. We all have a Colin. (laughs) The Um, energy vampire. Yeah, I feel like we all, I mean, not so much maybe in the industry because actors tend to be entertaining and fun and wonderful and bubbly. But there is sometimes someone who works maybe an event or something or, yeah, I think I had one time, um, it was someone like someone's manager or something. And it was like, you're, you're (laughs) Colin. Yeah. I don't know what's in their names, but. (laughs) Michelle K. Saw you at the last Comic-Con in Raleigh. Wondering how you like conventions since you, you're new to the scene. We kind of talked about that. Yeah. um, I like them. Like, again, I love meeting uh, the fans, I think they've been, you know, so supportive of the show and and of my career in general. So I love meeting, especially when a fan comes up and says that they see themselves on screen, because 
you know, for so long, all those check marks that were against me, like being queer, plus size, Latine, those were all strikes against me in this industry when I first got started. Not anymore. And those are all my strengths. They've always been my strengths. And Isn't that beautiful? People, yeah. And people are finally seeing them as my strength. And someone's watching me on screen saying, I didn't see myself represented on screen, but I feel seen when I see you and they have tears in their eyes. So that were, that alone is worth going all the cons. Wow, that's awesome. Leanne P. loved your work in Reacher. What was it like working with Alan Richin? Is he as nice on the set as he is in person? He's such a professional. Like, he's so, like, that guy's schedule is crazy. Like, he was working six six days a week, and he has a family and mm -hmm. and still, you know, devoted to them and, and making quality time with his kids and uh, super funny. Not just a serious guy, but he has a really funny side. Uh, but that guy's like this. Go, go, go. He was go, on the go. podcast, and he really got deep and talked about, like, when he tried to um, – uh, kill himself yeah and his depression and and it was just it was it was good to hear from a lot to a lot of people out yeah. there who are suffering from that stuff and yeah like, he was just really raw and honest so and it's I important really for him to 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 show that side because we wouldn't assume that you know sometimes you watch somebody you're like oh no he's a big tough guy like you know but he's a soft you know has a soft yeah. side and i'm glad that he shared that story because someone out there is going to benefit from that you know amen uh brandy d loved him on the magicians do you have a favorite moment from filming that series and by the way was there a lot of drama on that series i didn't have a lot of drama but did I you a, see a lot of drama i had a wonderful time <laughs> <laughs> you looked at me like holy shit uh, i mean the show's over now uh, you know the show's over um i i think i came into a, a already <laughs> i came into a, 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 a steam train already like in full motion if that makes sense mm -hmm. so when i came to set i i had a lovely time like i had a lovely time everyone every cast member was lovely to me um whether people have like you know quorums or something or favorites or whatnot um i've noticed that for me if it doesn't uh, entail anything to do with me, like it's like, oh, well, then, you know. It's fine as long as it doesn't fine. affect me. <laughs> that but that terrible. being said. That sounds terrible. No, because the first person I met on set was Hale. And Hale and I are, are friends to this. I call him one of my He's closest friends. He's a nice guy. I met him. super nice guy. Uh, we, just, we just gelled well, you know. And uh, Summer was the second person. And mm -hmm. to this day, talked to Summer. Um, and everyone I met w has been lovely. Um, and lovely to me. And they've had a great, you know, I think it's hard because they're all in the same age gr range. And um, I think there's discrepancies of like um, tears, you know, of like who, like who's maybe. Who's the lead. Who's, who's the, the lead, who's not. And that's such an ensemble show. But there is leads, you know. Right. And there is leads and whatnot. But uh, they made me feel comfortable. And that's all I can say is that made me always feel comfortable. Okay. Um, but I would hear as any set, you know, I think always, but, uh, uh, but yeah, what do you expect with just a, a cast full there's of a little talented? Chaos. There was a little chaos. They're all talented. They're all young. They're all beautiful, lovely. You know, there's bound to be a little bit of sparks or not or negativity or whatnot. And that's sure. what that we said. So that's all you'll say. Yeah, that's all I say. <laughs> do you have a favorite moment from filming that series? Um, I did love shooting on the moon chalk, the, the boat. The um, it was really sad to see the way the character for my character, the the way they kind of um, wrap their 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 human life form, uh, because in the book he dies very differently, and in the series um, we dealt with something really serious, which is depression, and he had this key that kind of um, this wonderful uh, character that seemed so bubbly and on point and always structured was holding a deep secret, which was depression, and uh, when the truth came out, um, he jumped off the ship and a dragon comes out and eats him <laughs> and when you go through the belly of a dragon which is played by the creator sarah um her voice anyways uh you go through purgatory and so you're not dead you're in purgatory which is nice because they saved him and they brought him back for future seasons but i that episode was really special because i was like i hope people you know this starts a conversation about um checking with your friends yeah yeah uh christy what's your dream role to play oh my dream role to play I love to do like a queer rom com adventure or something like superhero um or like a a villain, you know, I haven't really got to play a villain yet. And I think that'd be like juicy and I don't know. So maybe a rom com, a queer rom com or some kind of action packed um thriller as a lead. And I would think, yeah, those are the good ones. Yeah, I think those are good. And he said that's, one, that but there's several. No, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, do you do you at all deal with any depression now or any anxiety now, or do you mostly have it under control? 
I mean, I deal with anxiety just when it's like, oh, scheduling and stuff that gives me anxiety, you know, or disappointing like someone uh, gives me anxiety, but not severe anxiety. Like, it's just like something that I can, okay, take a breather, relax, you know, and like deal with it. But you never had issues with that. Not not no not deep like that um i think i've always overcompensated by i always see the glass half full to the point where i like have been in a place where i don't even allow myself to fall into a depression which means because i know things get bad but at a young age i chose to look at things like things are bad but they could always be worse you know what i mean and that mentality of me never allowed me to fall into a deep because i could have looked at my childhood and like pretty had a reason to fall into a deep, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I didn't. And I look back and it's only credit to like kind of becoming your own cheer team and your own like, no, it's like things can always be worse. So yes, things are bad. Deal with them. You're allowed to cry. You're allowed to feel. And you do you cry a lot. I do cry. I do cry. Uh, I cry. And I allow myself to cry all the time. And I think because I did that as a kid and it wasn't like manly, um, I never stopped myself from crying. Like, if I want to cry, I'm going to cry. If I cry watching a movie, if you tell me a story and I cry, I want to cry. I'm going to cry, you know, thinking yeah. about it. And that's okay. And I think because I allow myself to do that, it doesn't hold or fester inside of me like, mm, save it for later, just don't do it. You know what I mean? I don't do that yeah. because I allow my feelings to feel in the moment. I don't fall into like a depression and holding it back because I'm not holding and keeping it to myself. And I think because of that, for me, I can't speak for everyone else. For sure. me, that works and uh and yeah you have your you have your bad days you know mm-hmm. and you have a, a depressing day and you talk to like you know someone or you talk to a friend or a special or something but like it's never to the point where i don't i can't function or i can't control you know what i mean yeah yeah if your father was here today what would you want to say to him mm. that you didn't get to say I didn't get, that i didn't get to say yeah because he passed away quickly yeah. right and well, the thing is that with him, I feel like I did tell him all the time. He knew. He knew. Yeah. And I and I I always tell I always said I love you, pa, which means dad or, or pa, you know. Um, and so I think he knew. I think I would ask him more, um, what did he see us? Because we recently did a lot of things that were on our bucket list to do with our dad. Like he always wanted to be in the VIP area of the Dodgers game because he's the one who loved Dodgers so much. Right. So we would always get nosebleed sections because could afford with a family of like, you know, three boys, one girl, and himself. So you would always buy those ones. And that alone was a luxury, you know? And yeah. so I got to the place recently after his passing where I was in the Jumbotron at Dodger Stadium with my name. So I would ask him, um, what did you think of that moment? Wow. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's amazing. He'd be super proud. I think I know so. he was proud. Yeah. Um, this has been fantastic. You've been such an easygoing, fun, loving guest. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for allowing me to be inside of you. <laughs> that's what we say here on the show. <laughs> yeah. And um, I love your podcast. And as you know, we have a Shadows podcast, Behind the Shadows. Yes. Where can people listen to that? Anywhere you listen to your podcast, Behind the Shadows. Look for us on socials as well. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And Behind the Shadows uh, episode for every episode on the air is an episode of the podcast and who talks on the podcast i do i'm the host just you um well i have guest stars so every like we have anoop desai who plays the gene this season we have uh fred armison who plays a familiar this season's on Kristen shaw's on it uh mark's on it we talk about doug jones we had doug jones in the past yeah i love it i had him on the podcast Mm -hmm. wasn't he amazing so great he was so good as that character what character was it the baron the bear he was so good that body and language and you get to fight a lot too i see your choreography and the way you move that stick yeah people it's, don't think that's cr- me that's you that's me that's crazy people, how many hours do you work on that well the making of that like they teach it to us in an hour and then you have to go and go over it over and over and over so you learn the steps and the stick was my idea which I, looking back i was like why did i request like i didn't request it but i recommended it and i was like what if he went to london and he picked up a, a new character trait you know like a new skill and they're like what and i was like well he's always really good at fighting and he's been away for a year we don't know what he did in a year I don't know him. You know, it's like, he's been away for a year. He could have done something for a year. We don't know about. And they're like, we like that. What if he picked up like, you know, some of this work with stick? And I was like, I love it. So they taught it to me really quickly. And then I had to go away and go over it over and over. I had about like five days to like perfect it. You nailed it. And I was just like, like, it's going to live forever. So I got to make it. Did the crew cheer? 
Yeah, they were like the. I remember costume looking at me because we had to run it for the first time with the cape, the or the trench coat that I wear. Right. And so they're like, "Is this going to interfere? What kind of move are you doing?" They didn't know what the move looked like. So then I did it, and it made like the flare of the cape go out. And they're like, "Oh wow, that looks cool." <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I was like, it looks cool. I don't want to look like an idiot doing it, you know." Awesome. So doing my own stunt, thanks to Tig and and everyone at the stunt group at Shadows who helped out. But yeah, I love doing the stunt stuff. I really do. I also love. That you're seeing someone who looks like me be a badass on screen, which is not the norm. I, I would like to count in one hand how many times you've seen, you know, yeah. plus size people kick ass, and it's not the norm. So I. It is now. It is now, and I want to see more of it. I love it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, one of, one of my favorites. For sure. For sure. Definitely. Funny. Uh, forthcoming. Mm-hmm just uh open book an open book I, I didn't think there was anything i couldn't ask this guy yeah um so thank you harvey uh thank you for listening again if you enjoyed harvey i hope you'll subscribe and, and take a shot and listen to some of the other episodes sometimes it's not even about the guest you learn more about people you don't know or you didn't know this about um so yeah, yeah. Big, big fan of what we do in the shadows is great to see the yeah. real person right he's just a good dude he's a good dude and it's yeah. a great show great show i really loved it i love the movie too didn't you oh, it's hilarious movie is epic just epic uh top tier patrons get their names shouted out and uh just join patreon go to patreon.com slash inside you become a member uh of patron and uh it's a great community people are have become friends found friendships and other stuff and it's uh it's really cool so patreon.com slash inside you become a member and i will uh send you a message here are the top tiers. Nancy D, Leah S, Sarah V, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W, Sophie M, Kristen K, Raj C, Joshua D, CJP, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Kimberly E, Mike E, L, Don Supremo, 99 more, Amira, San Diego M, Chad D, W. W is correct. Leanne P, Maya P. Maddie S, Belinda N, Chris H, Dave H, Sheila G, Brad D, Ray H, Tab of the T, Tom N, Liliana A, Talia M, Betsy D, correct, Chad L, Marion Dan, uh, R N, N, Big Stevie W, Angel M, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Andy T, Gavinator, David C, John B, Brandy D, Camille S, The Chief. Joey M, Design OTG, Eugene and Leah, Nikki G, Corey, Katie B, Patricia, Heather L, Jake B, Megan T, Mel S, Orlando C, Caroline R, Christine S, Sarah S, Eric H, Shane R, Emma R, Jeremy V, Andrew M, Zoduichi, mm -hmm. 77, Oracle, Chris R, Michael F, Karina N, My Michelle D, Amanda R, Amanda S, Jen B, Kevin E, Katie Red, Stephanie K, Lena82, Jorel, and Billy S. Don't know what I would do without you guys. Top tier, um, top tier patrons. Uh, I think that's about it. Yeah. You have anything you want to tell me? No. No. <laughs> well, you heard it first from Ryan. Uh, thanks, guys, for listening. It means the world to me that you continue to listen and support this podcast. I hope you have a terrific week. Be good to yourself, most importantly. Uh, that's the most important thing. You have to be good to yourself. Learn to love yourself, right, man? we got to love ourselves, bro. Um, hey, from myself, Michael Rosamo, in the Hollywood Hills of California. I'm Ryan Taylor. The wave of the camera. Hey, thanks for listening, and uh, until next time, we'll see you.